Hey, so this is Ramon Ray, publisher of Smart Hustle Magazine and small business evangelist at Infusionsoft. Thanks for watching another episode of Smart Hustle. I was going to say Smart Hustle TV, but why do that? That's so old school. Smart Hustle. So thanks. So, hi, Deepti. Hi, how are you? Awesome. And so, Deepti, give us your uh, full name and tell us who you work for. My name is Deepti Sharma Kapoor, and I founded a company called foodtoeat.com. Awesome. So tell us about food to eat briefly, and then tell us a little bit about yourself, what your background is, where you came from, where you're going, what you studied, what you didn't study, whatever. Tell us about food to eat, well, and then about you. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll start off with what food to eat is today. And so today, food to eat is a, a place where we work with um, local vendors in New York City, like food trucks, restaurants, and caterers. And we take their services and we provide them to corporations to build corporate culture. And our philosophy is, uh, you know, corporations should be investing in their team um, to help build morale, um, you know, innovation, and so on. Um, so that's where food to eat is today. And we think that through small perks and benefits uh, like food, um, all of that is possible. Um, a little bit about myself, I am a native New Yorker, uh, born and brought up in Flushing, Queens. Nice. Um, I was born and brought up, well, I was born in Ohio, go ahead. Oh, well, there, it, it's always something nice to mention. Um, I was I was talking at a panel the other day and, you know, what I was saying was that you don't actually run into native New Yorkers anymore, so why not take a little bit of pride in that? Um, and I went, to, I went to college out in Long Island, and I, while I was in college, one of the things I became very much interested in was politics. Uh, so I worked on four uh, different campaigns while I was in college, nice. from mayoral to gubernatorial, senatorial, um, to presidential. So I did a lot of cool stuff, and, and I always like to make the comparison, you know, working on a campaign is like running your own company, because you're doing everything from ground up, you're building a team together, you're looking at a candidate as a product or service in a way, uh, because you have to figure out, you know, what are the right demographics, what's the market, what's the messaging, what's the story, um, what's basically going to resonate with people, and you have to do the same thing with a company. Um, so the idea of Food to Eat really came when I was standing online at a food truck, and I thought, I just spent 20 minutes and all I got was a peanut butter cookie. And I thought there has to be a better way to do this. And so I started talking to vendors and I thought maybe this could possibly be a company. Um, and the idea was how do I get food trucks more accessible and how do I get them online? Um, so that's where the idea really came from and you know, a little bit about me. But I love it, I love yeah. it. That's awesome. No, great, great. And so, um, so to, uh, food to eat basically, um, how does food and culture combine? Just explain that a bit more as well. Is, is it where food is like the next food ball, uh, uh, foosball table or swimming pool or ping pong table kind of uh, food and other perks or am I off base? Um, well, pretty much. You know, I think that, you know, if you look at it, um, Google, Facebook, all these big tech companies started um, in the late 90s, early 2000s, and they were one of the first companies that started to provide food benefits for their employees. Um, we started seeing a trend, and as I mentioned, we started as an online ordering platform for food trucks. And we noticed, you know, what we started to do was looking at our client base, and we saw that a lot of them were, you know, com you know companies that were in Midtown. And we said, okay, great, people have an interest in food trucks. What if we were to bring the food trucks to them and that they didn't just have to order from them? Um, and we were talking to our vendors and that was one of their concerns. They wanted to build a bigger business themselves. So we thought, why not provide these perks and benefits to your employees? And we started talking to our companies. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I was saying, Google, Facebook, they've been doing it for you know, over 15 years, why can't every company provide these perks and benefits without having to build a cafeteria? And what we wanted to do was really infiltrate business within the local community. Um, so we went to these companies and we said, hey guys, you guys should be providing, you know, these as perks and benefits. The millennial generation is growing and they want more than just, you know, a bonus at the end of the year that they hope they might get. Um, but, you know, people are more concentrated on their everyday culture, their everyday life. What am I what am I doing here besides just working for the, you know, the bigger person? What are they doing for me? Um, and I think health benefits are just becoming a norm, right? They're no longer benefits. They're, they're now a right that every company is supposed to provide. Um, so now, you know, I think with that, with that in mind, we've been talking to a lot of people about what can you do for your employees. Again, it helps in turn to build that morale, to get better innovation. And there have been hundreds and hundreds of research papers done on this through, you know, the, the snack culture. Um, so it's, you know, simple things. Like, you know, with some of our companies, what happens is lunch comes out, the team gets together, and now people are actually talking to each other as opposed 
opposed to just sitting at their desks and typing away. And so we think that this is just an, a small way, but and can benefit in many other ways. Awesome. And just so I get the <coughs> logistics of food to eat better. So I'm a company, and uh, every day at noon, a food truck is outside, or it's being brought into a table in here. Just, just explain that, or both. Just so I understand the. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, we started off with just food trucks, so there are some companies that can get food trucks right outside of their office, paid by the company, and the employees go down. Um, we also now work with over 900 uh, restaurants and traditional caterers, so we're doing anything and everything when it comes to food. Um, so office managers can reach out to us um, and have a personal concierge that like helps them plan everything out, or it can be automated, or they can simply go online our, our, our um, platform and order themselves. Um, so it's a combination of the three, which is what makes our, our service and company so interesting, is that we're not just automating catering, because I don't think that's possible. If somebody's ordering $6,000 worth of food, they want to be able to talk to someone at the Absolutely. same time, um, especially when it comes to food, because they want to make sure it's perfect. You know, you don't want to ever, ever upset anyone when it comes to their meal. It's the one thing you have to look forward to a day that, like, goes into your body and makes you feel good. Um, and so it's simple things like that that we want to make sure that our customer service is number one. Um, and we realize like, you know, that's what a lot of our clients love about us is that we're always very attentive to every detail possible. Well, they have deep to eat, I mean, food to eat. <laughs> I mean, what do, you, what do you expect? Well, I mean, food to eat is not just me. And I think, I just, of course. you know, and I think that that's one of the number one lessons that I've actually had as an entrepreneur is building an awesome and strong team. Mm -hmm. um, the more you concentrate, you know, I, I like to say I like hiring people that are smarter than me, um, only because as a founder I have to realize that I don't have all the answers and I don't know everything. Right. And I think every founder, um, once they realize that, that they have the strength of a team, it's not just one person, it's all five people in it together, it, you know, calls for an even better service or a better product or whatever it is that you're working on. So. so let's turn to the last three questions of the day, which will take the longest part of our discussion. Are uh, what challenges have you had? Uh, we want to hear some stories, if you have any challenges. Um, lessons learned, like if you said, Ramon, man, if I could rewind the smart hustle clock a year or two years, whatever it may be in your history, here's what I wouldn't do. And then leading into what are some ways that you could advise others, you know, as, you're, as others are watching this, that you'd say, hey, here's a few things that I think I could have done better, as it were. What would you? So I'll, I'll ask the questions again, of course. But for First question, some of the challenges. What are some things that, that Ramon, that you got stuck or the, laid on your bed at night just crying or, or angry? So tell us. Um, so some of the challenges. So when I first started the company, I, you know, I didn't come from a technical background. You know, like I said, I was working in politics for a while. Um, I didn't have the capability of building a website or to even know where, it start, where to start. Um, and so I started conceptualizing the idea back in 2009 and I was just thinking about it while I was doing some other work. And I decided to take the route of, I was, in, I was in India for a wedding, and I started talking to friends and family that, you know, had been working as engineers, and I thought, you're an engineer, you must be able to build a website for me, um, it must be really easy for you, you can do it in three days. Um, and obviously I wasn't that naive, but I, I did have this this notion that it must be simple, uh, much simpler than it was. and so. A, I had the challenge of not having a technical background. B, I had the challenge of not even realizing that to even look for a co-founder, right? A lot of people will say, you know, you should definitely go for a co-founder, but these are things that are lessons learned. I still don't have a co-founder, but I have an amazing team. Um, but while I was in India, one of the hardest things was, I do have to admit, I do look very young, um, and I still don't look my own age. Um, which, which is, is good, which is great. Yeah, which I'm very happy with, because, you know, by the time I'm 50, hopefully I'll look like 28. Um, but one of the interesting things was, and this is just being in a developing country, um, a lot of people thought that I was working on a project. So as a young woman who already looks young, you know, for her age, I was getting a lot of questions. You know, I was like, oh, this must be a project. What are you doing here? You don't, you don't know what you're doing. And so that was very frustrating, right? You know, and... and not, not to be taken seriously as well, is that... Part yeah. of it as well. Yeah. So it was not to be taken seriously. It was very, very challenging, and and I think a lot of young women face this. And you know, I think we are constantly talking about um, what it's like to be a young woman, um, and there's still a huge gender gap, right? No matter where you are. But this was in India, which is a very much developing country, um, and I'm hoping things are getting better there. But it's a very slow and gradual process. Um, so for me, what's important is to actually talk about what I've gone through and what I'm going through. But even through that, I didn't let people stop me. I just kept saying, listen, 
you may think this is a project, fine. Think of it as a project, but this is what I need done. <laughs> Tell me how can project we work to, not. yeah, project or not, whatever it is that you think I'm doing, it's fine. Let's see how we can move forward. And it was really convincing them because, you know, to them, they were just thinking, oh, this girl just graduated college. She worked here and there, fine, cool. But I didn't have the branded names, right? I didn't have, I worked for Google. And, and this is what they know, right? Because Google and all these big companies have set up big campuses there. And so to them, if you haven't worked at one of these top companies, you probably haven't made it, right? And that was their definition of success, getting a job at one of these companies and not actually doing something on their own. And I think it takes a rare breed to be able to do something on your own um, because there's a lot of risk, and I'm sure you know that. Hustling doesn't come easy, and it doesn't come... I mean, I think it comes naturally to some, but sometimes some have to work harder. Um, so I would say that's been one of my biggest challenges, um, you know, in being a woman, I mean, I've had some interesting talks with investors and um, investors have said to me, when are you planning on having a baby? And uh, I just stood there for a while being like, well, why does that matter? I just gave birth to one and that's my company. And so a lot of these challenges for me have been uh, being a young woman um, and the way people see me. Um, but again, all I do is, hey, listen, I have something awesome. I know I can do this, and I've had it, you know, validated by my customers, my vendors, and I'm going to keep growing. So it's those are the challenges that you kind of stop, you step away from, and you realize that instead of getting upset, how do I educate this person that I'm here to do something, and there are thousands, there's millions of other women that are trying to do the same thing, instead of stopping them and questioning them, how can you help them? Um, so instead of getting angry, that's been my approach, um, is how do I educate people more on the, the topics? You know, people say, how do you feel about quotas? Well, quotas have a negative connotation towards them, and, you know, recently there have been some investors that have said, um, I'm not going to speak on a panel unless there's a woman. And you know, some people are like, oh, that's, you know, a step backwards. And, and, and yes, it can be looked as that, but you have to understand there's a lot of people that are ignorant and don't know. And if they don't realize that that's a problem, well, we're at least that's educating. a problem to not have women. Yeah. Okay. And that we're at least educating them that why aren't you thinking of women when it comes to certain topics? There are more than enough women qualified to be talking about them. So I think it's more about the education process when it comes to the women issues that I've dealt with. Um, but beyond that, I think business challenges are normal. Um, okay. What's normal? Tell us about the two or three normal. I guess uh, cash flow, hiring, hiring the wrong person, having to let go of somewhere. I, I don't want to speak for you, but that's yeah. what normal, those normal things you mean. Yeah, okay. those, are the, those are the normal <laughs> things that I, I think that everyone goes through, okay. man, woman, whoever mm -hmm. you are. Um, hiring has definitely been an interesting one for me. When I first started the business and I came back to the U.S., I didn't realize that, you know, Hiring was such a challenge. You know, you would say, I'm going to put up a post. There's going to be 100 people that are going to apply, and I'm going to pick five, and then I'm going to narrow it down to one. You think that people are going to keep applying to your positions, but they don't. And even when they do, bad hires do happen. Um, so something that I think it was more of a mistake than a challenge was that I was hiring too quickly. Um, and I wasn't, you know, I was just hiring because I needed people, right? I needed to build our network. I was doing a lot of the sales of signing on vendors initially myself. And I was hiring anybody that was capable of being able to walk around and talk to people, but didn't have any prior experience. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think I spent time hiring too quickly um, and not intelligently, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, took the first six to eight months for me to realize, like, maybe I should change my approach. Um, and this is the first time I was ever hiring anybody. I was never given the task of hiring people. I was always given the task of, here's some really cool people, here's, you know, go work with them. And, you know, see what their capacity is and like build it, build it up from there. Um, so I would say that was one of the biggest challenges that I had. And, and now, you know, I've taken um, it upon me to only try to hire people based off of references. You know, like I'll say, hey, you know, Hey friend, yes, can you definitely. recommend blah, 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 I'm looking for these positions and that's what I'm basing it off of now. Um, and I've realized that that's the best way that's worked for, for me and has worked for a lot of other uh, friends of mine that run their own companies as well. Now let's talk about financing. How are you financing it? How are you eating? How are you living? How are you paying your rent? How, how are you paying for developers today? VC, your own money, Visa, MasterCard, no. spouse, family. What, what, tell me th th briefly that story. Okay. <laughs> Um, so currently, I've raised half a million from friends and family, um, and that I raised a few years ago. And we're going, you know, we've 
we've had an interesting um, development at Food to Eat. You know, we started as an online ordering platform for very that was very much consumer focused, um, and we have pivoted. Right, so our pivot um, has brought us to where we are today, which is the corporations uh, concierge corporate packaging that we've been working on, and um, we're looking to raise another round now. Um, so, how am I feeding myself through the last round, and how am I going to continue by raising another round, um, and uh, and hoping t- that that round would help us lead to profitability in the next two years? And can you talk about the detail of that? I'm not sure what's public or not. Can you talk about what you want to raise? Is that okay to talk about? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're looking to raise 1.5 million. Okay. Um, and mainly for you know expansion we're doing really well in new york um we're actually we just hired our first uh person in philadelphia so we're looking to start there um as our second city and uh and yeah so right now it's uh talking to as many people as possible um sharing the food to eat story sharing you know our past uh you know success and failures and you know how they brought us to where we are today and um pitching hard being uh, as aggressive as possible Last question I want to talk to you about is uh, what lessons you can uh, share with other people that they can, you know, uh, from your experiences. And we've talked about some lessons already, but kind of a repeat, a recap of uh, what you can share with others. But I do want to go back to the women's issues um, and baby and things like this. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the stage where Ramon's either going to put his foot in his mouth um, or not. So we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> so meaning, because I think it is an important issue. W- women's issues are a very important topic, hot topic. I have many women in my life, my wife, my daughter, and et cetera. But going back to the issue when you said, or when are you having a baby and et cetera, do you think that these are, is it a question of, I'm curious, insensitivity? Is it a question of people need to be better educated? Or is it a question uh, that, that someone should know better? And I, and I say example, maybe I'll edit some of this out. We'll see what happens. We're talking long, but I am curious, meaning uh, as a black American, let's say, uh, women's has one issue, but let's say people ignorantly think black people are dumb. Let's just make it up, something like that. Now, I think that's just education. I don't take it offensively like somebody, you know, I, I think it's just so, and my point I say with the, with the baby issue, as, as a guy who has two kids, having a baby can take a lady out of commission for X period of time or not. She may decide to stay at home and raise them, whatever. So I'm asking, is it a valid question at least to say that beyond being rude and sen- you know, can you just yeah. talk about that? The issue of being rude or lack of education or that there's a practical question of it. Can you speak yeah, to that? Absolutely. So there's a lot that I feel about this question, um, and I'm still actually trying to form an opinion on as to what it means or how it feels. Uh, when I was asked the question, I was taken aback because no one's ever asked me that. Have I asked myself that question? Absolutely. You know, after I got married, my husband and I've talked about having kids. It's just it's natural. a no- it's natural, right? Whether you want them or you don't, yes. but. I don't think that in any context it's okay for someone to ask me whether or not I'm going to have a child because what if I'm trying and I'm having a problem? That's not, it's very insensitive in that sense, right? And it's also technically illegal in an interview, right? I I understand that one for sure, the the illegal part, yeah. If if you're not allowed to ask these questions in an interview, why should an investor be able to ask? Now, if if I was to think about it, why he asked? I, under, I know why he asked, right? Because he's making an investment, he's not sure. But what he should be asking, I believe, is, hey, I know that f- there might be circumstances in which you may want to pursue having a family. What would you do? Maybe, okay. but and I, I, even then I still don't feel like it's proper. Or would you be in the long haul for this for the next three to five years full time? Yeah, uh, okay. and, and at the end of the day, at, like I said, I, I'm a woman that, you know, I decided to start a company, right? I decided that I knew I was going to be making many sacrifices and I decided to do this on my own. And that's what I said. I was like, I gave birth to a a baby already and this is my company and have I let it go when times have been tough? No. So I wouldn't do the same if anything else happened in my life, right? At the end of the day, I think one of the things you were asking was lessons learned, right? A, A big lesson that I learned in this past week was, you know, my husband was in the hospital Um, is having a strong team Mm -hmm. and without a strong team you can be nowhere you cannot you know I like to like I said I like to hire people that are smarter than me and it may sound silly but it's true right I alone can't handle my company but when I chose to step away my team was there to handle everything it was as if I was on maternity that feels very good doesn't it and it feels amazing to know that my team through it all gave me my personal time and didn't ask me why I was stepping away they knew exactly what it was and and, and I didn't feel afraid to step away from the business. So if there's one thing that I've learned is 
make sure that your team is as strong as possible and that if you do have to step away because personal things do happen life you know shit happens life happens and so if you have to be able to step away that your team will help you and so for me whenever I do and if I do decide to have a child or start a family I know that my team will be there and that's what an investor should be looking at they should be looking at that I was smart enough to build a team that was strong enough to to go on without me for whatever period of time um so you know, I guess that's one way to look at it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can go on. And no, that's good. That's good. Well, on the next show, we'll t do that. But uh, any other lessons learned? Uh, this, just to share with the the audience here, you know, you've been doing this, and how long? How long have you from remind me conception to today? What's um, it, how many years or months or whatever the? So twenty eleven is when we had our beta. Oh. So so it's been about four years. And then, so lessons, um, um, advice, any particular, and we shared a lot already, so maybe there's no more particular that comes to mind. If not, it's okay. But anything else that I didn't, that you wanted to share, or you're talking to a room full of people, or millions of people on Smart Hustle, uh, not yet, but you know, what would you, anything else to share with them? A team is one, I know. Um, hiring, make sure you hire. We talked about that. And anything else that comes to mind? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that was really essential to our pivot was we were looking a lot at our data. Um, we were looking at who our customers were, and we decided to reach out to them. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs sometimes are afraid to talk to their customers because they're afraid to hear the negative mm -hmm. feedback, right? And I was too at some point, right? I never wanted to hear an order that had gone wrong. I never wanted to hear somebody that wasn't happy. I always wanted to hear the positive. But the amazing thing was that when we actually started to look at our consumer data, we saw all these people were ordering from our food trucks, but a lot of them were coming from these big companies. Mm -hmm. We thought, well, this is interesting. You know, consumer is growing, but it's not growing fast enough. And it was, you know, as a, as a consumer model, it's always harder to grow, right? There is, you need a lot of money for marketing. It's just, you need people and, and a whole lot of other things. And we didn't have that. And so we were growing, we were doing well, but we weren't growing fast enough for my own, for my own happiness or for my own form of success. And so I think that was the most interesting thing is that we started to actually look at our own customers, at our own data, and we were talking to them. And another thing from that I would say is that, you know, a lot of people, they come up with an idea and they think that I'm going to start a company. Instead of just thinking about the idea, think, talk to people that who's, who would use this, right? So when I first started online ordering for food trucks, what did I do? I went to food trucks, I went to food carts, and I talked to about 50 of them. And from there I thought, if they're interested, there's one validation yes, I got. Absolutely. You know, you have to get validation not by just starting a product, by, by actually talking to people and getting the feedback before you even get there. And so for us, definitely, you know, talking to our customers once we started the company, but be, even before we had started, talking to the vendors that we were going to sell to and what it is, you know, what it is that they needed because you can start a product and then later find out six months down the line that you could create something that is that they can't even use, right? So that's something that was extremely important for us that, you know, lessons learned advice that I would give to anybody is customers, 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 because those are the most important p people. And, you know, once you start gaining, you know, I think somebody was telling me, once you start gaining a customer, you start losing them really quickly. So you have to find that balance and figure out what is the best way for me to, like, entertain them in the best way possible. Um, wow. <clears throat> this has been amazing. Um, and then the last question is anything I didn't ask you that you wanted to say? And I know we've talked quite a bit, but <laughs> I just want to, I always ask that. Is something, anything that was, I wish you would have asked me this, or I wanted to say anything else. And if not, then this has been an awesome I can, I, a round of applause for Deep D. Clap, clap, clap. Good. So, uh, no, it's an awesome interview. But anything else that you wanted to add that I didn't ask you or that you want to share? Uh, no, I think um, actually I was on a panel uh, where, you know, the gentleman that I was uh, on the panel with had said when he had started his company, um, and I don't know if you want to use this, but why is it important? What, like, whatever your idea is, why is it important? Why is it important to me? And why am I the best person to be doing this? Um, and I think those were three essential questions that I started to think about. Um, and, and any idea, you know, I think as an entrepreneur, as a person that likes to think, I come up with different ideas every day. I'm a problem solver. Um, but when thinking about whether or not you want to start your next venture, I think these are three essential questions, right? So why is it important? Why is it important to me? Um, and am I the right person to be doing this? Well, because it's, you know, ideas can come from anywhere, but it's about execution. Anybody could have created Uber, Facebook, et cetera, but it's about the ex execution and the person who actually went through with it. And I think that makes all the difference. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. So, thank you for watching Smart Hustle. And once again, who are you and who you work for? I know Deep D with Food to Eat, but you can give me the full name and uh, who you work for again. 
My name is Deepti Sharma Kapoor, and uh, I'm the founder and CEO of foodtoeat.com. Awesome. Thank you all for watching.